The world does not work the way you think it does. Nothing is what you think it is. And there are so many deeper and far better understandings of the way the world, the earth, government, commerce, religion, uh, the whole human society on the earth works totally different than you think it does. And this is why people are not able to do anything about the bad situation that the world is sinking into and is sinking quickly into a dark place. And the reason why is because the people of the earth, not just the, uh, not just of my own uh, country, the people of my own country, but the people of the world have no way of doing anything. They have no power to make anything happen. Uh, so the problem being and the reason why America in particular has no power, uh, we can cry and complain and we feel that we're free because we can go out on television and rant and rave in the streets with signs and uh, talk about how we, we you know, how bad the system is. But there's nothing we can do about it. And the reason why is because knowledge is power. And without the knowledge of how things actually and point of fact work, then you're never going to be able to change or do anything uh, to make it better. And I've said a couple of times before, if you, you know, if you own a Rolls Royce, but if you're out in the desert and it, and it stops running, uh, you know, well, your air conditioning stops running and you start, you know, you're not going anywhere. Well, if you're not a Rolls Royce mechanic, then, then you're going to need help because you don't know how anything works. Well, that's the way America is today. The American people, along with the, probably the rest of the world, is e equally as smart enough to know that the whole world is in trouble, the whole earth. And, but nobody seems to know where it's coming from. It's like uh, the old, uh, I, I remember a, a, a politician many, many years ago saying the situation in the world today is like a stereo when it first came out. I mean, it's all around you, but nobody knows where it's coming from. So that's the reason why I have been doing what I have for the past 56 years, uh, personally trying to talk to people about how much they don't know and, and uh, trying to point the way to where the information is so that for the first time, um, Americans, especially my fellow Americans, can understand how... America works, and uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing is more further from the truth than how you think the world works. And so uh, I've been trying to uh, find the best uh, guests that are far better, uh, you know, far better at presenting this kind of deep and important material. <clears throat> and uh, and I, I've had many, many dear friends who are experts on this subject. And I'll be, and I will for sure be having more experts on this general subject of the occult or hidden way the world really works. But tonight I wanted to especially uh, uh, thank my guests for being with me because an incredible mind uh, that he has to, and the way that he is able to explain deep and dark things. And uh, I, I've often said that the world works on smoke and mirrors. Well, what does that mean, smoke and mirrors? Well, it just means that it, nothing is what you think it is. Uh, and that's, this is why you keep butting your head up against the, uh, the, the wall or a mirror, because you keep thinking you know what you're doing when you don't know what you're doing. So my guest tonight uh, is named Curtis. And uh, I've talked with Curtis before. I've actually had him on the show before, but I'm going to have him on more now because uh, his kind of information is, I feel, very important. I don't know uh, anywhere near what he does, but I know enough to know the subject matter is important. And I've been looking at it and talking to experts for many years about this general subject of the occult or arcane occult hidden 
way the world really works. And so with that introduction, uh, just realize I'm not the authority on anything, but I do have some really wonderful friends who are rather, uh, you know, highly intelligent on the things which I see, but they can explain better than me. I'm not the authority. But with all of that said, uh, I hope Curtis is with us. Are you there? Are you there, Curtis? Can, can you hear me okay, Jordan? Yes, I can hear you just fine. All right. Um, okay, so uh, as I've said before, I, I understand the occult, and the word occult simply means hidden. So I understand the hidden or the occult world of finance. I've been talking about it for many years. I know about the... Uh, uh, the the dark underpinnings of Western civilization, how government really works, uh, how organized crime actually operates, and uh, and religion especially is my is my subject that I have <clears throat> always loved to talk about. But tonight I want to talk about uh, the uh, the hidden or the arcane hidden uh, world of money and finance, banking, and how money works and what it is what are we talking about what makes paper paper in your wallet important what makes it uh important and valuable i i don't know it's just paper so that's why i've had uh, that's why i've asked curtis to come on and explain to my audience so i can understand too uh something about the hidden system of finance and the world that we live in. So I don't know if that's enough of an introduction. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if that's not, enough of an introduction, but that's the best I can do. Uh, well, now, now I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> how, how in the world can I follow that? By the way, you've been at, you've been at this as long as I've had the Spirit of God in me. I mean, 56 oh. years. Oh. I took my first breath 56 years ago, and uh, that was it. I mean, so you've been, you've been at it as long as I've been here. Yeah, well, yeah, I started off in 1959, uh, you know, know, just talking a little group, little group discussions and mom and pop, uh, bookstores and, you know, little, little, um, uh, private meetings like that, talking about the the government and the Federal Reserve and the Knights Templars and the Illuminati and secret societies and where religions have come from, because I've always been interested in that kind of thing. But it wasn't until about the 80s, uh, mid-80s, that I became aware of the concept of the difference between the United States of America uh, the Republic and a corporation called the United States Incorporated, which is a company. Uh, uh, and, and then from there, that opened up the doors. I'm saying in the mid eighties, that opened up the doors to, well, what is the value of money and who prints okay. the money and, and where, uh, you know, what is really going on on the earth today? And then I heard you and I was blown away. So. I'll let Let's, you try. Maybe I'll let you try and go from uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I like you. It's, it, it, I don't feel like I'm an authority on anything, but I, I do. I'm, I'm here to entertain myself most of the time. Yeah, me because too. yeah, the stuff is so crazy that I mean, the first four or five years into it, it was toxic as heck. But it, once I broke through a little bit of it and I started seeing the light of truth, then it didn't hurt so bad. But you know what's funny is. I mean, we're t- tonight and maybe in the future we're going to be talking about money, but money, I mean, as we believe it to be, as, as we think it is, and um, ultimately it comes back to probably an area where, where you're pretty strong, but I think money at this point on the entire planet is more, it, it, it's, we should just call it what it is. We're using a certificate of indulgence that is granted by the Roman Catholic Church. Ultimately, yes. that's what, what it comes out to. It's a certificate of indulgence. But yes. I think I think that you just made a comment. I mean, let's, let, I'm going to try to start extremely superficial. On the very surface, so I can try to gather up as many people as possible before I get into the really strange stuff that I've discovered over the years that, that ties money back basically to our soul. Um, yes. So yes. I'll that start really. Very, that <laughs> is exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly okay. what I'm talking about: is the, the the arcane and the dark secrets of money. And, and well, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's no, that's no. What I wanted to hear about. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it's 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 like 
it's like a path. I got I got to break through the top. I got to let people know where where it is first. You said something just a minute ago. You know, the United States versus the Republic and whatever. I I I want to start there just because I want people to understand a very simple concept. If you can understand this concept, especially with as much admiralty law as you've been into or commerce over the years, let's break this down into three very simple ideas. There's subdivisions within each each one of these, but I want to just at least name the three. So the United States. The United States is what I call a uh, a maritime republic or um it, it's it's pure commerce. It's a business. It's an organization, a trade union, per se. And so the United States by itself is it's just a business. That's all it is. And 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 whether it's overseeing a, a, a larger business, I don't know. But I'm just I'm going to call the United States a business. The United States of America is a country. It's a republic. And and people have to recognize the fact that this is the it's what they perceive it to be. It's a government with living people involved and things like that. By the way, it still exists. It hasn't gone anywhere like a lot of people believe it has. It's still there. Mm-hmm. But then there's the third thing that most people are really confused about, and that's America. America is a whole different ball game. America is a geography. America is North America, South America, and Central America. America is called the Americas. It's plural. It's all of it. And and it was it was actually claimed through what's called the doctrine of discovery by the Roman Catholic Church back in the fifteen I think the fourteen hundreds. So mm-hmm. the doctrine of discovery is about Christianity. They're laying claim to Christianity to everything that's happened in Americas. So the in the Americas canon law rules in the Americas canon law rules. So and, and basically the doctrine of discovery says that Spain and I believe it was Portugal basically rule over the Americas. So that being said, what's the difference between America and the United States of America? Well, North America has a specific republic within the geography of North America, not counting Canada. So the republic is, it includes like Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, Indiana. That's the republic or the United States of America. Because America by itself is identifying basically Catholic property, America by itself. So the United States of America is identifying something completely different. And then, of course, the United States is, is a, within that, it's a private business that's operating completely separate. So to me, the United States is a business. The United States of America is a government or a country. And, and America is, well, it's Roman Catholic. <laughs> so, no doubt about that. There's no doubt that's how about I like it. That's how I like to look at it. So, yeah. Let's let's start with you said money. I'm going to go with money all by itself first, and I'm going to use Webster's and I'm going to use Black's Law Dictionary for money, the definition of money. So let's do money right off the bat. This is our Merriam-Webster. I took it Merriam-Webster online, and here's what it says: money, something generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a measure of value or means of payment, such as. Officially coined or stamped metal currency, newly minted money. B, money of account. Paper money, handed uh, paper money. Two, wealth reckoned in terms of money. Three, a form or denomination of coin or paper money. Four, uh, the first, second, or third place winners, in other words, in the money, that type of thing. Um, five, persons or interests possessing or controlling and the rest is a position of wealth for, okay. Um, ultimately, it's a medium of exchange. That's what money is supposed to be, a medium of exchange. Something where, and I like to use a lot of examples. So so here's, here's the way I like to describe my idea of money. I It has to be a value for value exchange. Meaning, we're all born equal, we all have the value of one. In other words, you, Jordan, equal one, and I, Kurt, equal one. And and whatever we produce, that's our one. That's our one. It doesn't matter what it is. You 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 have a value of one, and I have a value of one. If I want what you produce, and you want what I produce, we exchange the one. So you have my one, and I have your one. And we're both happy. In other words, there's no, I don't know, what's the word? I don't. There's no compromise. 
We don't compromise on that. You get all of my one, and I get all of your one, and we're completely satisfied with that exchange. That's a one-to-one -one exchange. Compromise would mean that, let's say, you got 99% of what you wanted, <laughs> and I got 100%. Well, I'm okay, but you still have an outstanding 1% where you're, you're kind of unsatisfied, it, meaning that that's an open door. Meaning if somebody that can offer you that last 1% could drive a wedge between your your agreement with me because they're going to offer you the full 100% you're looking for. I think of it this way, um, a compromise, compromising in a marriage. I mean, if, if, if I say that my wife is 85% of what I'm looking for in a woman, <laughs> that's not a very good position, is it? Because... There's 15% out there <laughs> that if, if I can find that last 15% in somebody else, I'm going to jump ship. I'm going to go someplace else. And so I don't believe in compromise. I believe that when you make an agreement, you're agreeing to that one-to-one -one exchange. Here's the problem with, with the system as it is right now that I see it. <clears throat> it's an energy-based system. Whatever you produce through your ability to produce your energy, the fact that you're alive, the fact that your heart's beating, um, that energy exchange, your production with what you can do with your energy is traded for my production, what I can do with my energy. That's all it is. And what they've done is they've created a system to where there's a man in the middle, the middleman, who doesn't offer any energy at all to the exchange. He doesn't offer anything, but he takes out. So if you and I make an agreement, um, we're pretty good if it's just you and I, but if a third party comes in and says, listen, I put you two guys together, so I'm going to, I'm going to extract 50% of the agreement. Well, then neither one of us actually have a true agreement because somebody came in and took or extracted energy. The easiest way for me to, to, to kind of explain this is, uh, well, the Federal Reserve is such a, it's, it's a middleman. So here's, here's a good picture in my head. Let's just say that, uh, you and I are neighbors. You're a potato farmer, and I'm, and I'm a laborer. I dig holes for a living. So you, you, you ask me, you say, Kurt, can you come over today and uh, dig a hole for me? And I say, absolutely. You know what I need in exchange of that labor, that hole, is I need a bushel of potatoes. So whatever the requirement of energy for you to create that bushel of potatoes, that's all I'm asking for the exchange of my energy to dig the hole. So when I finish the hole or manifest the hole, you got what you want, and then you hand me the bushel of potatoes. And now we're, that's a one-to-one -one exchange. We're good. There's no, there's no debt. Um, what they've done is they've created a medium of exchange because we can't do that. On a large scale, the way the world works, we can't exchange things that way. That's why a barter, a true barter system can't work on a global scale. My wife and I have you know, Amazon businesses or eBay businesses and have since about 2005. And there's no way that I can dig a hole in, um, I don't know, Ireland. You know, I can't go dig a hole in Ireland and exchange that energy for somebody in Ireland for what they have to offer me. So that there's a medium of exchange called a Federal Reserve note that is being used in this world. Now, this is what's weird about it. That medium of exchange, there's no energy to it. It's dead. So when somebody comes in, when, when, when let's say the Federal Reserve is using, they're taking, let's say, extracting 50% for the use of their reserve note. The problem with that is that if I, if you and I are making a one-to-one -one exchange, and let's just, let's let's use a dollar value for for our labor, I'll dig the hole for fifty dollars, which would normally buy me a bushel of potatoes. Normally buy me a bushel of potatoes. So the $50 you offer me allows me to get those potatoes. So I, I still a one-to-one -one exchange. We just call it $50 now. The problem is, is that the $50 doesn't have a full $50 value if somebody's extracting 50% of the energy of the $50. That means that if you give me $50 for me manifesting a hole in your backyard, if you give me $50, that fifty dollars, because the, the Federal Reserve middleman took out his fifty percent share, the fifty dollars you gave me now is only worth twenty five dollars in purchasing power. I lost fifty percent of my end of the deal because the Federal Reserve extracted its energy from that medium of exchange. 
So what you really have to give me, if we're agreeing to a $50 bushel of, of, of potatoes, you're going to have to give me $100 of Federal Reserve notes because the Federal Reserve is going to extract their 50% which brings it down to fifty dollars in purchasing power, and I can now I can still get the bushel of potatoes. See, that's what the middleman does. The middleman extracts the energy. They've done nothing. They put in nothing, but they're extracting out an, a, a source of energy. So we can never actually make payments. We can never actually pay each other the way it's designed. If there was no middleman, if there was no usury, which is what it's really called, they call it inflation, but it's ultimately just usury. If there was no usury, then everything that's ever produced would be an asset instead of a liability. One more example. I mean, this is, I'm going to try to simplify this. It seems kind of difficult right now, but I'll make it, I'm going to use another example. I live in Rockford, Illinois. If the people of Rockford, Illinois decided to build a bridge and they floated a bond or did whatever they had to do to finance that bridge, if there was no middleman, when that bridge was built, the bridge would be an asset to the community. But because there's a middleman that has already extracted his energy, the bridge is never an asset. It's always a liability. In other words, it never truly gets paid for. Somebody has always owed money on that bridge. So the community doesn't have an asset. It has a liability. And that's kind of how everything is working around the world, is that because there's a middleman extracting energy, from all, from us, from each, each and every one of us, and I'll get to that later, but because of that, um, the system is actually, well, it's dying, kind of like what you were talking about earlier. It's dying. It, it's very, it, it's, we're not going in a good place, and there's no way to recover. There's no way to recover. We can't recover. The system has to be terminated in order for us to be okay again. So, anyway... The money, a medium of exchange is all it is. But here's, I want to go to Black, Black's Law right now and talk about, and, and use their definition real quick. So I just used Merriam-Webster. It just says something generally accepted as a medium of exchange. That's Merriam-Webster. Here's Black's Law. Black's Law says money in usual and ordinary ex acceptation means coin and paper currency used as circulating medium of exchange, there it is, medium of exchange, and does not, here it goes, this is Black's Law definition of money, it says, does not embrace notes, bonds, evidences of debt, or other personal or real estate. It says, legal tender, near money, script, wampum, a medium of exchange authorized or adopted by a domestic or foreign government, as part of its currency, but it says money is not, it does not embrace notes, bonds, evidences of debt, or other personal or real estate. So a Federal Reserve note is not considered money. Right off the bat. It's a note. Uh, yeah, but I was going to say that uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not money because even on the face of the uh, of the uh, dollar bill, it says this uh, or well, how does it say it that this is? Um, I, I'm trying to remember how it says it, but but basically what what the, is on the dollar bill it says this is uh, to be used to represent money. This is not a dollar, but this is representing uh, something. So it's not it, it's not really money. It's just a paper representing something. Yeah, and, and ultimately, if you go, you don't have to go too far back to find out where the money went. And that's probably a good, a good place to go. Because again, money, it's just a medium of exchange that everybody believes or has faith in. Hence the full faith and credit idea. But yeah. you have to have the faith that, I mean, I have to believe that when you gave, when you gave me that $50 for me to dig the hole in your yard, I have to believe that the fifty dollars will buy my bushel of potatoes. Yeah. I have to believe it will, um, but it doesn't anymore because of that middleman. And that's the problem: is that when we lose faith in that system, that system will collapse. All by that, it will yeah. collapse. 
Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me throw this in too. I, I think this is going right along with what you're saying, and I think it will help the audience too. Uh, suppose uh, I uh, and and people have heard me say this before, but maybe some haven't. Suppose I want my office painted, and you are a painting contractor. So I, uh, you come and check the job and see what, uh, what's, what's required, and you give me a price to paint my office of $100, say, and I accept. We're talking about commerce and business. And then you come and paint the, my office, and when you're through, you turn around, and what do you do? As a contractor, you hand me a bill, and the bill is for $100. Well, uh you just handed me a bill for a hundred dollars. I reach into my wallet and I pull out a hundred dollar bill and hand it to you. So now you're happy because I paid you. No, I didn't <laughs> pay you. I gave you a hundred dollar bill. Why? Because you gave me a hundred dollar bill. So I didn't pay you anything. I discharged the debt. I didn't pay the bill. So that's why you don't owe anything. You don't own anything. You don't own your home. You don't own your 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 car. You don't own your boat. You don't own your plane. You don't own nothing, period. Why? Because you never paid for it. You discharged the debt, but you didn't pay the bill. So if you had given me a bill for $20, I'd give you a $20 bill. If you give me a bill for a hundred dollars, I'll give you a hundred dollar bill. So the bottom line is, I didn't pay you anything. I discharged the debt. Now you owe me a hundred dollars, and I owe you a hundred dollars. So we're even. <laughs> no, we're even. Neither one of us got anything, but you did the work. You know. <laughs> you got a painted office. <laughs> yeah, I got a painted office. And you got it, something you think is worth uh, is worth uh, you know a hundred dollars, and go out and try and buy something, and you find it's only worth about ten. So, uh, but that's the way it works, you know. So I'm just saying that when you when you are giving people Federal Reserve notes, you're not giving them money. You are discharging a debt, like if you walk across a carpet and touch a piece of steel, and you get a you, know, you get a, a charge. Well, that's what you do when you walk into Sears and you buy some clothes. You're going to get charged, and uh, and they expect you to pay the charge. And so it's a bill, and so it's just words and words and terms that are you know that we come to accept every day and never really think about the implications of what we're doing. So I just wanted to throw that in. No, I, I see that's the thing is we we hear these words all the time. I mean, you get you, you end up in court <laughs> and and there's a charge. Yeah. But and, and and we're going to get into that because I I I I've discovered some things recently that by the time we're done with this stuff, uh, the, all the admiralty stuff, all that stuff is going to make sense. And by the way, it's really not scary. It's really and and it comes down to one singular. One singular moment in your life, it really does, and and that's what that's when it goes really crazy. Is when by the time people hear this stuff, they're going to go, "Wow, man! I mean, does, does Jordan really talk to that guy?" Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go really nutty, but because that it's going to be the foundation of everything. But the, yeah. again, about that charge, about the idea of the charge, it's it's because everything. Um, we do, we do, even the word "do" to do something. It implies um, real-time action right now. You know, you can't do something uh, then, you know what I mean? You're doing it now. So, in other words, everything happens in the present moment. And this, is, this is another hard concept for people. Everything we do in, in our entire life, it only happens now. We always are doing now. We can't do it yesterday, and we can't do it tomorrow. When the moment comes, we're doing it in that moment. So everything is in the present moment. And the word present also means grace. And the whole idea of the Christ or the concept of the Christ or the I am also implies presence, meaning right now. So unless you have life in you, unless you're alive in this very moment, you can't do anything. Everything, all the energy that is provided for the system as what they use, the term they use, is creditor. So mm -hmm. all the energy is in the present moment. The creditor exists in life in the present moment. That's the creditor. That's the one that actually does the very thing that creates the charge. 
I, it's creating a charge. When I do, when I dig the hole in your yard, I'm doing it right now. And when I do it right now, until until you pay me, there is a charge, a positive charge. My energy went into that hole. And in order for me to be, get back to equilibrium, I have to have that energy discharged. You have to pay me. In order for my energy, to, in order for me to get back to equilibrium, I've just given you my energy. I need an equal exchange back to me so I get back to equilibrium. So Because mm-hmm. right now, I, I'm in the negative. I gave you this, and I'm in the negative. And, and so in, in order, it doesn't matter what the medium is at this point. A bushel of potatoes is fine. You know, but <laughs> that's the whole idea. you got to give me something. There has to be a value-for-value value exchange, and that's what people don't understand. All, when I hear the word creditor and debtor, I, I, I want to poop my pants because, <laughs> because the creditor, the energy source is only in the present moment. We always only do things right now in the present. Now, here's what's weird. The present moment is where all energy, when, where all things are made, where all, everything happens. That's the present. That's the grace of God. That's the Christ. That's I am. Not I will be or I was. It's I am. I am implies the present moment. So the creditor is the Christ. That's the creditor. That's the one that pays all the bills. You know what I mean? It pays everything. Because that's the only place things can actually happen in the present moment. In 1582, what did Pope Gregory do? He created another timeline, the Gregorian calendar. He created another position, another timeline that the Roman Catholic Church claims as their own, the Anno Domini calendar. And so, and where does the, and you know the stars better than most, I mean, where does the Anno Domini fit into the Julian calendar? 13 days behind it right now. 13 days behind. So if I lay claim to a character born to the Anno Domini Gregorian calendar of, of Pope Gregory of 1582, I'm claiming a position 13 days behind the present moment of the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar. So look how weird that is. If the Julian calendar identifies the present day, the present moment in real time, where the, where the creditor exists, then who the hell is 13 days in the, in the past? Who, who's coming up behind you 13 days later but the debtor? In other words, if Curtis Richard Kallenbach, the, the birth certificated person, born to the Anno Domini Gregorian calendar 13 days after the present moment, if Curtis Richard Kallenbach lays claim to the hole that was dug in your yard, did he dig the hole? Hell no. I, but I dug the hole. Curtis Richard Kallenbach is 13 days behind me claiming my work. So he's actually being extended credit by 13 days. He's being extended my energy for 13 days. Because I dig it right now, but 13 days from now, he's coming behind me 13 days in the, in the Gregorian calendar. He's behind me 13 days taking my credit. Take, I mean, he's, he, think about this. It's Wimpy saying, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. This is the weirdest thing is people have no idea that this split personality, these two positions, the, the two different calendar positions, the real time, real moment, Julian calendar, versus the, the, the calendar that's 13 days behind. There's a 13-day differential right now. And that's, the, that's where all the interest lies. The interest is between the present moment where the Christ actually does the work, the I am does the work, the energy actually creates, the energy puts the energy in, and the character 13 days behind claiming, claiming that position. That's, that's, a 13, that's a note of that. The guy in the in the behind, Curtis Richard Kallenbach, that birth certificated person owes the the, the the I am in the present owes him. There's your there's your differential right there. The present moment generates the the charge, and and the guy behind is the one that has to discharge it, or vice versa, I should say. Mm-hmm. Because the credit, think about it. I get a 13 day extension of credit. I, I'm claiming the whole. Right now, 13 days. You, you see what I'm getting at? I'm actually getting paid for the whole 13 days in advance. Remember, this, I, this is weird. This is a tough concept, but the present is the future to the past. <laughs> the present is the future to the past. So right now is the future to 13 days from now. 
Well, I remember, I remember coming across that more than one time that the, uh, Catholic Church and, and, uh, you know, uh, was changing dates and, uh, during the Middle Ages, rewriting the calendar and there was a, you know, and I never understood why, uh, they were changing the dates and, and calendar. But, but what you were saying brings up another interesting point that, uh, your body is a biological uh, battery, you know, if it wasn't for electricity, you couldn't move. So it's biological electricity, but electricity nonetheless. And so you're a biological battery. And uh, and then uh, if, if if someone's going to charge you, uh, then if you can't uh, deal with that charge, then they will put you into a cell. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, and so that's what a battery is. So you put the, the energy into a cell. So you're going to jail. And, well, think, uh, and, but, but that's exactly right. But look at if I do something in advance, I mean, if I get on a bicycle that that's um, tie, that's that's attached to a generator that's that's funneling energy into a battery, in other words, for future use, I mean, yeah. I could sit on a bike and pedal that thing and, and charge up that battery. So the energy from me, the biological being pedaling, created the energy that's in that battery that's in storage in the battery. For future yeah. use, you know, and that's that's what I am. That's what the Christ is. See, the present moment is me doing the work, picking the hole in your yard right now. The funny thing is, is the the, the Roman Catholic Gregorian Anno Domini character, thirteen days behind me, is taking credit for that energy right now in his world, thirteen days in advance. That's a loan. I mean, he's in debt to me for thirteen days of my energy. That's and, and but it's me. So I'm actually, I'm both the creditor and I'm the debtor through their character. I'm both. I'm, I'm both positions. I am the presence, and Curtis Richard Kallenbach is 13 days behind me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get the general gist of it, uh, but the thing that stands out in my mind is I know that the Catholic Church uh, did change the calendar, and there was all kinds of... Uh, <clears throat> arcane or occult or hidden uh, significance to the banking world going on, uh, you know, in the Vatican. Because remember, I'm saying this to everyone, remember the Vatican has dominated Europe for over 2,000 years. Uh, 1,600 years the Vatican has dominated Europe. Uh, What I wanted to say was that Rome has dominated uh, Europe for about 2,300 years, starting with the Caesars of Rome, and then later about 1,600 years, uh, from, you know, backwards, uh, was the Vatican dominating so Europe. And so, therefore, Rome is still dominating Europe. Now it's the Holy Father. Well, it's the same thing as the Caesars of Rome. But, uh, if you think about how Rome has dominated Europe for 2300 years, and then for the past 1600 years, it's continued to dominate, uh, uh, Europe. It's called the Vatican which means that the Vatican and Rome has dominated the, uh, Europe for 2,300 years. But what you don't think about is that Europe itself has dominated the planet for 2,300 <laughs> years. And so all roads lead to Rome, period. Ab- and absolutely. And what is it that this, we're talking about money, but since it's only a medium of exchange, what is it ultimately that they're, that they're after? They're after the labor. Because the labor is the, is, is the product, I mean, the energy of each and every one of us, whether it's your intellect, your yep. product, the, 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 the things, the articles, the things you put out, the, the knowledge you put out, that's a product of, of your brain, which is energy, and you put that product out, and that's through your labor. It's intellectual, but it's still labor. And that's what they're capturing through the medium of exchange, is the energy. It doesn't matter whether it's me digging a hole or you putting out a book. It's the same damn thing. And so they're capturing the labor or the energy or the the, the productivity of man through a very simple mechanism. It it really is, and it's our belief. It's our belief. And it's going to come down to something so horrifying, ultimately. It's going to come down to the concept of believing in salvation. Uh, And I'll get into that, too, you know, by the time we're all done with this. Because salvage, the concept of salvage, i.e., admiralty, a ship, you know, a shipwreck, and and salvation are one and the same thing. So when you when admiralty is, is the, the law of salvage, and of course salvation is the same same darn darn thing. 
So we're gonna we're gonna get into that, but I'm just I just want to be clear that that's the margin between the real here and now. Again, remember the word present and grace are the same thing. And 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 I'm not I'm not a religious guy. And I'm, by the way, I'm also not a patriot because those are that's the separation of church and state. And you can't you can't exist with the separation of church and state because the the, the state is the father. And the church is the mother, and you can't divide those two because you're a product of both. You have to have both the divine masculine and the divine feminine and your mother's DNA and your father's DNA in order to exist. So you cannot separate church and state, which is what, what they've done on paper. But, again, back to this. It, this is such a simple idea. I, I, I have a tendency to make things really difficult. <laughs> Well, you know, I had a I had a rabbi uh, not not too many years ago make that point to me that uh, it says in the scriptures, uh, you know, to honor your father and your mother, and he and he said, uh, your father is government and your mother is the church and religion. That's that's the uh, implications of the scripture to honor your father and your mother, meaning the one that gave uh, that gave you a presence on the earth. Is government, uh, and not the one that created you, but the one that gave you a, pr- a position on earth is your father, and the one that uh, nurtures you with that position is is the church and religion, your your theology. So your mother and your father is the government and the church. <laughs> and so, yeah. like you said, you can't you can't divide them because they are, they are you know it's mother and father. The the uh, summa theologica. The Roman Catholic Church doctrine, the, the very the stuff they use in seminary, um, Saint, Saint Thomas Aquinas. Um, I believe that, and if, if people want to go to this, I, I've been at it long enough to remember the page number. It's page four thousand nine hundred ninety-five. The Summa Theologica. They actually describe what mom and dad bring bring to your life. Dad, father brings form or status, standing or, or, or position. You know, your societal position. Of course. And mother, and mother brings substance, which is the material or the matter. So dad is subject, mom is matter, subject matter. So the combination of father and mother together are called subject matter, which is the res or the existence of your, of, of you, of each and every one mm-hmm. of them. But that's saying, that's right out of church doctrine. And they describe the mother, you know, all the products from mother's womb. And, and of course, father gets status or standing. That's why what you just said about the the, uh, the rabbi saying honor thy father and mother. What's interesting about that is recently, you know, the concept of standing. People said I, I've been trying to change my status for standing for a while. You don't have to. What you have to understand is that you need to bring those two pieces together. You need to bring those two pieces, father and mother, back together because when you do that, it's called good standing. And good standing also has the same legal definition as honor. So when you have good standing, you're in honor. And that, and, and people don't realize it, but good standing is the father's side attached to the mother's side. Now you're in honor with both mom and dad. But you need, mm-hmm. you need to not leave one of those out. Patriot means father. And of course, the mother's side of the matrix is pure mother. You can't have one or the other. You can't choose one or the other. That's separation. And no, right. yeah. But, but, and again, back to the concept of money. It's it, these guys have known the energy system since the beginning. They didn't. They don't care what you call it. They don't care what 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 denomination. They don't care about any of that. All they care about is what you believe and how they can get you to believe it to give up your labor, to give up your labor so they can get produced what they want. And that's it's it's a very simple thing for them because all they have to do is is make sure that we have great entertainment and we have you know plenty of food. alcohol food <laughs> yeah, no, that's, food. Why, we, that's, that's yeah. why we have uh, 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 liquor stores on every corner in every city every corner has a liquor store and it's and it's crammed filled with all kinds of alcohol and liquor and cigarettes and, and cigars. Uh, but it's, you know, uh, it's pretty much on every damn corner. Why? Because we want to make sure that the people are drugged, and if they're angry and upset and they're, and they're frustrated, they can always have a couple of drinks and forget it and go watch basketball. And so 
Uh, I've always noticed that. And, and Dick Gregory, my dear friend Dick Gregory, once said, uh, you know, uh, everything is changing prices. I mean, you, you, things that cost you 10 cents many years ago cost you $2 today, except except in alcohol. Alcohol is still just about the same price it always was. Uh, it hasn't gone up that much in price at all. It's pretty easy to get, uh, even if you are, uh, you know, a derelict or sleeping in an alley, you can always uh, bum a few dollars off of somebody and get a bottle. So, uh, alcohol is, is, uh, like, uh, Joe Kennedy, yeah, yeah, Joe Kennedy, the, uh, the great merchant, uh, the Kennedy father, he said alcohol was made to be, uh, alcohol was made to be sold, not consumed. And uh, and I thought, well, that's pretty interesting from a guy who was big in the liquor industry. He said alcohol was made to be sold, make money off of it. You don't drink that stuff. And so, <laughs> when I, yeah. and so when I look at the way the world works, it's the same thing. Uh, nothing is what you think it is. And, uh, and And when you start breaking down words and terms and, you know, and I, like I always say, you have to go to court. Why do you go to court? Well, you you play tennis on a court. And how do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. And so, <laughs> and then you find out, no, no, the whole thing is a racket. And uh, and then you begin to see how, you know, what is a bank? You have to put money in a bank. Where do you, where do you find a bank? A bank's on both sides of a river. It's called a river bank. And what what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current, see. And so uh, it's just a, a ebb and flow of a current of your labor. And so uh, I remember a, a Jesuit. I remember a Jesuit priest a long time ago. We were talking about this kind of thing many years ago. But but anyway, the, this Jesuit priest just casually said to me, "Well, you know, uh, in any uh, in any family, the male." The father man manufactures, uh, and the and the woman is in labor creating the product. And so uh, when and so you come down your mother's birth canal, uh, implying water, and she, then her water breaks, and you come out as a maritime admiralty product. But I thought that was uh, interesting, you know. Uh, that, uh, at the top I, I of the hour. We I, 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 I thought I heard that, the music. That's a perfect segue for uh, me to start on that path. Uh, you know, I mean, because I, the most important stuff is what you just said right there. But if we can get into the nuts and bolts of that, because everything started in 1933 here when FDR basically said, today is the day of national, national consecration. He actually created a, the holy ground a day of national country, a, a holy nation, a nation made up entirely of holy ground. And that's, exa- you just described it, and, and whether you know it or not, you just described the holy ground, which is the, which is the land of your soul. And that, by the way, is, is where the certificate of indulgence comes into play. And again, in 1933, FDR, when he created that nation, he actually said, today's a day of national consecration. I mean, is Illinois, is Illinois, I mean, in, in Indiana and, and Wisconsin and Arizona and everywhere out there by you, is that one nation? Hell no, it's not. So how in the world do you say today's the day of national consecration as if only one existed? It's because he created one in that moment. And, and it, and it, it was, it, it's very specific to what they did. And he, and he generated these certificates of indulgence or deeds to that land as of 1933. The birth certificate came out that year. Yep. And then we'll, I mean, I can go, that's where I want to go with this conversation. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, there's a lot there. And uh, the other thing that bothers me about it is because that was in 1933. Yeah, 33. Yeah, 33. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, I guess we'll tonight is Curtis, and we're talking about the occult or arcane subject of money and and how governments work and all of the strange stuff that we uh, Americans are never allowed to know. No one, no one teaches it in school. There's a very good reason why they don't teach these things in school, because the teachers have no idea in the world what they're hearing. They, 
teachers have never heard any of this. And so uh, it's always been the same thing in any tyranny. Anytime somebody wants to take over and run a, uh, run the plantation, you don't let the people living on the land know what you're doing. So all of this has been kept from us purposely so that we would not know how our government works, how money works, how our churches and religions and synagogues and all of the other uh, institutions that we humans have built up to control each other. I mean, I just remember as a kid hearing uh, the, the, the plight of um, uh, man's inhumanity to man. Well, my God, uh, it's everywhere now. Mankind has has, uh, given itself over to institutions, ideas, and concepts, and they have no idea in the world where the words come from. uh, They're not able to fathom uh, how our money works, how the – and we were talking about labor and how the church has always been in charge of your labor. Uh, well, keep in mind, the church is there when you're born, when you get married, and when you die. So they, you know, <laughs> they bring you in, they nurture you while you're here, and when you leave, they own everything from day one. So uh, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to bring out, too, <clears throat> that I feel is very important to say at this point, is that when we look at Washington, D.C., and look at the uh, the uh, history of that area we call Washington, D.C., uh, you can see we today, the, uh, we today, the American U- U.S., is nothing more than a regurgitation, redoing of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, America is the ancient Roman Empire come back to life because, um, First of all, the history books will tell you that the center of power, the very seat of power in the Roman Empire was on a hill, and it was called Capitoline Hill. And today we, here in America, we have a Capitol Hill. And uh, and uh, the history books will tell you that in order for Caesar to officiate over the Roman Empire, he had to, quote, go up on the hill. And so many history books talk about when Caesar was up on the hill, uh, the Capitoline Hill, or Capitol Hill. Well, hell, that's what we have. We have a Capitol Hill, and we hear these uh, uh, pundits and paid uh, uh, prostitutes talking every night on, on, on radio and television about the, the, the president was up on the hill today. Etc. Etc. Well, what are you doing up on the hill? Well, he's presiding over the Roman Senate. So it's the Senate and the people of Rome up on the hill, and uh, so and even that one particular area that we call the federal enclave or the federal enclave, that ten miles square, whatever it is, we call Washington D.C. District of Columbia. Originally, that ten miles square in the very beginnings. Way back before the founding of the U.S., the people who owned that 10-mile square called it Rome, R-O-M-E, Rome. It was referred to as Rome. I just think it's interesting that they then they carved out a 10-mile square and called it Washington, D.C., and changed the name from Rome to the United States, uh, to the District of Columbia. (laughs) So what we're talking about here is not... Uh, this is, I've said this before and I want to stress it again. We're not talking about a Jewish conspiracy or an Illuminati conspiracy. We're talking about the quite simple way the world works. Rome dominates the earth, period. All roads lead to Rome. <clears throat> so there's where we need to, you know, get some correct understanding. Uh, uh, it, it's an extraordinary story of betrayal and ignorance and ill-informed uh, public that does not realize America is under a Roman Catholic domination. If you don't think so, go back and look at the words and the terms with the founding of this country, <clears throat> and especially all the obvious things. Uh, so it, it, there's on the web... Uh, under image, if you go on the web under image, you will see quite literally hundreds of pictures of the popes and cardinals and, and all the big shots in the Catholic Church 
are right in the middle of the American government. They are, they are having dinner and laughing and talking and, uh, and enjoying themselves in New York, the Empire State. Uh, and, uh, and they are right in the middle of America's, uh, domination of currency, money, government. It's the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican, uh, with its, uh, military arm, uh, the Jesuits, who are actually behind all of this brilliant strategy and brilliant thinking that has given birth to the matrix that we in the world today live under. I believe it all goes back to Rome. Like I said, all roads lead to Rome. So that's my feeling about it. I was born and raised in the Catholic Church. All of my family were Catholics. I'm not saying the Catholic people are bad. I'm talking about the history of the corporation, the history of the uh, operation out of the Vatican it has nothing to do with the poor Christian and poor uh, Catholic people. I'm talking about the business of religion. And this is why the mafia, all you know, so close to Roman Catholicism and the Roman Catholic Church, uh, the mob always talks about it's just business. And this is why every time uh, some big shot mafiosi dies in Chicago and New York, the Catholic Church has major, big, big uh, burial services and all kinds of accolades uh, from the from the Catholic Church about what a wonderful man um, Al Capone was, what a wonderful man uh, all of these great, uh, you know, uh, uh, organized crime figures. They're all buried in the uh, with the Catholic Church. So, like I said, the church is there when you're born, when you get married, and when you die. The church <laughs> dominates the world, period. And uh, so that's what I want. And all of this was dreamt up by uh, Jesuit theologians and, and international gangsters out of Europe. All of these concepts we're talking about tonight, very, very dark stuff. But you have to understand the church is involved in Europe for 1,600 years, and that's where all of this stuff comes from. America is merely uh, the latest rendition of the Roman Empire. And I hope Curtis is still there with us. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love this. It, it, and remember that Ignatius Loyola, you know, the guy that probably oh, yeah. founded the, the Jesuits, remember yeah. what his entire goal was. His goal was to capture the soul of man. Yes, and, and, I, remember, and what, I remember reading that. I remember, and yeah. you know what? I thought about that. You know, uh, I don't know if they do it anymore, but there was a time when when a baby was born while it was still in the hospital. Uh, the mother was in quote labor, laboring to uh, create the product that uh, her husband manufactured. Uh, but they, but when the baby was born, they would take the uh, the foot of the the feet of the baby. And, uh, and, uh, you know, put ink on it and <clears throat> stamp it on a page. So, uh, uh it wasn't a, a, a handprint. It was a footprint. And I thought, is that why they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, to, uh, register your soul? Because that's what your bottom of your foot's called, your soul. And so I, I, I just see that there's a lot of dark stuff going on in what we call religion and, and commerce and banking. <clears throat> And it's just the system that's developed by humans. And uh, uh, I, I, I would go even fur- a step further and say I think that we are living in a system that was designed uh, by a demonic, uh, by a demonic force, something that is not of this world, something I call preternatural, not supernatural, but preternatural, meaning not of this world. I mean. You ask any Catholic or any child, well, where's God? And they, pout, they point up, you know, out there into the sky. Well, God's out there in heaven. <clears throat> well, do you believe in angels? Yes. Where are angels? Well, angels are out there with God in heaven. Well, I got to tell you, God and the angels then are obviously extraterrestrial. And it's beginning to look more and more the more I look at this. <clears throat> yeah, it's beginning to look like the whole entire story of religion is based on extraterrestrial uh, influence, you know, driving us and guiding us. And we think we're talking to God. 
and we think we're worshiping God, and it's it's an incredible story of betrayal. I think the ultimate story about God is that there are extraterrestrials here, and that our universe is teeming with life, and somebody's come here a long time ago and checked us out and thought, you know what? Uh, these, these people are pushovers. They don't know they're, they don't know what they're doing. So why don't we come in and run the whole earth for them and they will work and they will dig up the gold and they'll make money for us and they will do all this stuff for us. And when we're through, we'll just bury them. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so that's what I think is going on now. I think that we are being led by extraterrestrial or higher intelligence in the universe. I mean, you know, I don't care if you want to call it God or what, whatever you wish to call it, but all the ancient religions of the world recognize the fact that there's a higher power in the universe and there's a higher power in, in our life. And so, that's what we're really up against. And unless people realize it and realize the church today, the whole Christian church, Judaism, and uh, and the Muslim religion are all three part and parcel to something very, very dark and something very big, and very old. And we need to wake up and find out your your life, your money, your banks, your educational institution, everything that you depend on <clears throat> in your country and in your life has been manipulated by a higher power. And that's why I love to be able to bring to people the knowledge about how this stuff really works. And again, I want to thank uh, Curtis for trying trying to help us to understand a very dark hey, subject. Jordan, Jordan, what's the, what's the um, if you, off the top of your head, I, I, I already know what I'm asking, so I already know the answer, obviously. But you're familiar with the circum pump. Uh, somewhat, but I don't recall. Okay. okay, the circumpunct obviously is just, it's a circle with a dot in the middle. Okay. Okay, that's a circumpunct. One of the oldest symbols for God ever. Was. Okay. Yeah, was yeah, simple. Yeah. Was a circle with a, with a dot in the, in the center? Yeah, and, and now look at this. Look at how strange, I mean, I'm going to go into, I mean, I'm going to go into Admiralty and all that stuff right now very simply. Because you're talking about the, the, the mother's birth canal, the, the, the waters of mother. And things yep. like that. Yep. Look how strange this is. The circumpunct, if you can envision that a circle being the ovum or the egg of the female and the dot in the middle being the sperm yep. of the male. In other words, a, 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 a fertilized egg is God because that's the act of creation, is it not? <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. It did. And so, so just the, the concept of fertilization and creation is an act of God all by itself. What's really funny about that circumpunct or about a fertilized ovum um, is that it's the only time ever where the male and the female actually they, they share the same time and space. It's it's a, it's a it's a singularity. It's the only time ever where a man and a woman actually share the same space with their DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I get that. I understand and, that. That's really and so, interesting. And so when Heavenly Father, and I'm going to get kind of gross here for a second, you know, comes down and 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 plows the field of Mother Earth. <laughs> well, no, that that, listen. That that's exactly where the concept of he, uh, of God the Father comes from. You uh, better believe back it. Back into the uh, Babylonian, Sumerian, and the ancient Egyptian systems, especially in India and the Hindu system, uh, the one of the main one of the main uh, names of God in the ancient Hindu was a God named Rain, R A I N, Rain. And that was a name of a god, and he was referred to as God the Father. And he, when uh, and he was impregnating Mother Earth with the sac- sacred fluid. And so when he would impregnate Mother Earth uh, with the sacred fluid, which we today call rain, uh, and, and, and therefore she gave birth to all kinds of life because God the Father had impregnated Mother, uh, Mother Earth, Mother Nature. That's where the whole idea of we get of God the Father. I mean, when you get into religion, there's another whole subject we could spend all night on, on where these ideas have really come from. Uh, it, it's an extraordinary story of how much we don't know about our religions and government and commerce and all the rest of it. But let's get back to what you were saying. I just wanted to make that point that Rome is still alive. We call it America. So, and Washington, D.C. is still the Roman Empire. And 
the position that uh, I, I was there in in uh, in England to York, England, where, where you see the statues of Caesar uh, in front of churches and buildings. Well, that was a, that was the main headquarters for the Roman Empire when they went into Britannia was the the, the city of uh, York, England. And so when the Vatican uh, and all of its international banking cartels and all this dark stuff was moving to the new world, they came to uh, the new world, which is us, yeah, and they yep. set up their operation, call it New York. And so New York was the uh, uh, was the empire, and the empire strikes back. Now we're getting into George Lucas and Indiana <laughs> Jones and all that. It's all one story. It's all very deep, very dark, and very mystical, but fascinating for me. I love this kind of research, uh, but it really does imply something very, very evil is afoot. It's the oh. greatest story ever told. <laughs> yeah, it's the greatest story ever told. It's not the greatest collection of historical facts. It's a story. And once you understand the Bible, is a story. It's the greatest story ever told. But once you begin to see what the story really is and see how it's a, a metaphor, then it becomes really interesting. You know, now you're seeing maritime admiralty law. You're seeing uh, all the court system. You're seeing uh, the the labor, the control of labor, like the mafia. The mob is very big on uh, controlling the labor unions, you know, the carpenters union, the, you know, the painters union, and the Soviet union, and now the uh, it, uh, the uh, European union. And where was the European Union, the paperwork for the European Union signed? Where was the official day and the official signing of all the different governments in Europe come together to sign the European Union? If it wasn't in a church, in a Vatican, in a, in a Catholic church in Rome, the pictures are there on the web. You can see it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, all the uh, all the big nations sent their presidents and all their officials to Rome to a to a very big, beautiful Catholic church where they up on the altar they were sitting there. All the officials of European, uh, you know, setting up the European Union, and they were signing all the papers with the cardinals and all the uh, church officials there. So this whole idea of uh, of the Amer of the uh, European Union is a American is a Vatican uh, fascist Nazi operation, big time in your face. And, uh, and you know, there's all kinds of proof of that that the European Union today is nothing more than a than a Nazi Vatican operation to reestablish the Holy Roman Empire over the whole earth. But you can't do anything with the whole earth unless you get rid of America first, because it's the biggest guy on the block. And that's why we're in so much trouble. They're trying to destroy the American ideal, the American people, and put us into prisons and put us into stupidity and ignorance so that we don't understand how our money works, how our government works. The whole thing is really a, a terrible shame. So Yeah, you know. it, 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 and, it, but it, and it's funny because... What I've kind of discovered over over time was through the only the, the words of the Pope himself. I don't even. What's funny is when I want to get my way, I use the Pope's words. I always use the Pope's words because I I can see where I can agree with it. I mean, I did it in one of my son's cases. I, I mean, court yeah. cases. I use the Pope's yeah. words, and believe it or not, they they use the word innocent. My my son was found innocent because I used the Pope's words. From the position of father, so I used the the uh, uh, Rerum Novarum that was written somewhere around the 1880s by the Pope, claiming the father position over my son, and because I claimed to be the father, uh, my son was actually found innocent. And that it's strange because the, the the Pope is claiming to be the father of the entire planet, basically, because all the right. children are ultimately um, illegitimate or bastard children, and they are. In fact, I'm about to prove that. One last thing I'll say before I get into this, because it's kind of fun. You'll like this, actually. But, but if people that are listening to this right now, if they're near their computer, um, type in Vesica Pisces, that's D-E-S-I-C-A, Pisces, P-I-S-C-I-S, as in Pisces, you know, the stars, uh, Vesica Pisces, and then type in Washington Monument. What you're going to see is, a, is an aerial view 
of uh, the Vesica Pisces. And the Vesica Pisces is where two circles intersect. Yep, yep. And what's funny is that the Washington Monument as a phallic symbol is coming right up through the vagina. That's it. And, and what's I mean, crazy the, 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 That's exactly <laughs> what it is. The Washington Monument is the male erection, and it, and it connects directly to the female ovaries or the oval office. Yeah, and, and, but if you look, it, it, this aerial view looking right down on top of it, they also show not only is the Vesica Pisces there, but the circumpunct is there. Yep. Because, because, because you're looking right down on top of the, the, the Washington Monument, which is a dot in the middle of the circle. Which, so all this stuff is, these guys that have been, that were fighting the Catholic Church, I mean, Washington and all these other esoteric, you know, uh, Freemason guys and all this other stuff before they were co-opted by the Jesuits and what have you. They were, they, they had their own version of reality, which is probably more real, it's more nature based. But, yep. uh, yep. so, I mean, they put all these symbols out there for us to recognize that this is all about nature. Nature is God. God is part of nature. It's, it has nothing to do with this man-made religion stuff. So, um, but that's, that, that's the war. The war is for your mind. And, and that's of what's course. funny is, and, and again, if you look at the Vatican of Pisces, you're going to see the Jesus fish in there too. Of well, course. here's the, and, uh, and, and, and during the Middle Ages, <laughs> all over uh, in the Middle Ages, you would always see Jesus in the uh, the almond or the female ovaries, and all of that was all part of the art of the church. And my God, hey. that's a whole subject, a uh, completely whole different subject when you get into the hidden sex of religion. I mean, I can give you another three hours just on <laughs> that in relation what? to. Judaism and and uh, and Christianity and and, and Islam, uh, all three are based based completely on sex, and uh, of course you can go back to uh, the 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 parent of all three of our major world religions today: Judaism, Christianity, and uh, the Muslim religion. All three are based almost directly on Hindu. The Hindus gave all the symbols, ideas, and concepts to all three religions. But uh, nobody seems to want to talk about that, the Hindu connection to Islam and America and to Christianity and Judaism. But Judaism itself is just crammed, filled with Hindu. Uh, all the words and terms and symbols, all of it goes back to the ancient Hindu. So, I mean, you know, when you're looking at money and looking at all the arcane, strange, dark stuff about money and labor and the control of labor and then the control of people's minds with religion, uh, this entire world that we live in is nothing more than a, than a cesspool of ignorance and stupidity. And it's frightening because you, you know, there's no place for us to come too. There's no place else to go to. You know, well, I, hear, I, you know. I, I need to read something to you real quick. That, yeah. that's, that, that you'll, you'll actually, it, I hope it puts a smile on your face because some of the things I did, I've done recently, just in the past, let's say, few months, I actually have a letter here from the Department of Justice that, that huh. basically says, I'll, I'll read it. It's just, I, I, even I'm smiling right now. It says, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, this is from the Department of Justice, by the way. It says, dear friend. <laughs> the Department of Justice is calling me a friend. Oh, yeah. Which means, well. I'm, which, is, which means I'm not an outlaw. So, and very few people, I've never, I've always seen this like three, three or four times in my entire life where you, somebody was considered a friend by the federal government and Department of Justice. Look at this. It says, thank you for your recent letter to the Attorney General. We reviewed the information, and by the way, the information that they reviewed was my birth record, uh, my birth record, and, and something I said about it, which is going to lead me up to the this, this certificate of indulgence here. But it says, we reviewed the information you provided, and it appears that this matter does not involve federal law and or the Department of Justice. <laughs> so, so the federal government is no longer, I'm no longer an enemy of the state. Because of something I did. How, how crazy know, is I've that? I've heard about this. I've heard about this, but I want to know more because I've heard this before that that you uh, that you as a U.S. citizen are considered to be an enemy of the state 
unless you are actively engaged in military and law enforcement. But if you're not actively, if you're retired, then, then you're out. But if you're actively engaged in military and police and law enforcement, then you are a friend to a government. If you're not actively engage in military or law enforcement, then you are considered by law to be an enemy of the state. And so, yeah, it, and what, it, what it is is it's, 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 it's sort of a defense position. It's a defensive. In other words, remember that the entire, all this stuff, when you hear the word um, issue of national security. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, everybody. What is an issue? <laughs> but I mean, it's a security issue. It's, it's actually yeah. a, a share of stock in a company. So it's an yeah. issue of national security because the financing of, of, the, of the United States is the security of the United States. So it's, this is not about, you know, what people think it is. An issue of national security can be a guy wearing fatigues overseas or it could be a stock share for a corporation. An issue yeah. of national, but it's a, it's a nation. It's, it's a security issue for a specific nation that FDR created in 1933 when he said right. today is the day of national consecration. So he created a holy ground, a, a holy ground, a place where deeds would be um, issued for holy ground. And that was that's what the birth record is. It's a deed to basically holy ground. The the, oh. the, the, the the land of your soul. Your DNA yeah. is the land of your soul. So here we go. This is kind of fun, and, and it's gonna. And I'm gonna try to keep it really simple because we can always come back on this. But I want to get this out tonight. And we talked about it a little bit, I think, last time. But but here's what's weird about this: all the, the concept of child sacrifice, the concept of a savior or a sacrificial lamb is going to come into play. And by the way, this all this all fits into the concept of certificate of indulgence or the financing because this very thing I'm about to say. Is what is, is the entire system in, in a nutshell? So here we go. Um, so so again, mom walks. Mom walks into a hospital, pregnant. In other words, she's carrying a package in her womb, and and does she stop by customs when she goes into the hospital? Of course, you know enough about the Knights Hospitallers uh, or the Knights of the, uh, the Knights of Malta to know that they were there to receive Christian pilgrims, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay, so a hospital or the Knights Hospitallers, I believe the Knights of Malta actually are the ones that lay claim to most hospitals in the world because they're there to receive new Christian pilgrims. So here yeah. we go. Mom walks into a federal hospital or, or a hospital carrying a package. She does not stop by customs to declare the package, does she? No. She delivers the package inside that territory, wherever that is, the hospital. But So does she call customs right then and there and say, hey, listen, I, I, I'm declaring this, this, this newborn? No, she doesn't. So there's no declaration there. They wrap baby up, and mom and dad take baby back home. Do they call customs before they remove baby from that territory and say, hey, you know, I'm declaring my new son, my new daughter. No. So there's no declaration. And you got to think about this. You're in this territory, and, and basically you've never declared going in or out of, of that thing that happened right there. So there's no record of, of baby Jordan <laughs> anywhere. So what is the record for? Well, the record is an event. It, it just marks the day or an event or some happening. They, they're not really saying it's anything specific. Well, what is left behind in the hospital? I'll use me as an example. So my mom and dad, my mom goes into the hospital carrying a package. She delivers baby Curtis in the hospital, doesn't declare baby Curtis. My dad doesn't lay claim to me, you know. Nothing happens. They take me home. There's no record of me even, even existing at this point. But what does my mom leave behind in the hospital? She leaves three things. She leaves uh, some paperwork that has a title. Curtis Richard Kallenbach on it. She, she leaves that behind. She also leaves some DNA. In other words, the very, the very essence of my existence, the fetal tissue, it's called afterbirth. And, and mm -hmm. so she, she leaves behind my fetal tissue and she leaves behind her maternal afterbirth. So inside the afterbirth, there's two different, um, D, uh, uh, DNA. There's my mom's DNA and my DNA in the afterbirth. 
So there are three different things left behind in the hospital that, 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 that go basically abandoned. So she abandons the title because she doesn't take that with her. She abandons my DNA, even though I went, I, I baby went home with mom and dad. She, my, my fetal tissue is left behind and my mother's DNA is left behind as well. So here's what's so strange about this. Now we're going to go back into the concept of admiralty. My, my mother's DNA, when, 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 let's, I, I'm going to back up a little bit here because we, we, we don't have a lot of time, but we have enough time for this. We're going to go back to the idea of the, 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 um, the circumpunct, the circle with a dot in the middle. When my dad's sperm fertilizes my mother's ovum in my mother's womb, that is the beginning. That's where my father's DNA and my mother's DNA blend and, and, and through uh, uh, de-differentiation and all this other stuff, it becomes unique DNA to me. It becomes my DNA. Is it my father's DNA? No. Is it my mother's DNA? No. It's unique because it's a combination of both, and it's my property. It's, it's, that's the first of my kind. That's the beginning of my existence. So within 21 days of that, it's, just, it's called a zygote at this point. That zygote is my DNA now, exclusively mine. Um, within 21 days of that fertilization, the heart there's enough of a heart there to actually receive a signal from wherever that signal comes from. The Pleiades, the sun star system, I don't know, but and I'm not going to pretend to know. But the heart starts to beat when it receives that signal. So you got two different things happening here. The beginning of the new DNA, which is the fertilized ovum or the zygote, and now you have a separate heartbeat separate from mothers. There's, there's the first of the, the zygote, then there's the beginning of the heartbeat, and then finally... When baby comes out of the womb, there's the first breath, which is called an inspiration, or the breath of God enters the baby, separating baby from mother completely. So, mm-hmm. so that it's the separation from mother that is the beginning of your time in this realm on this earth. It's the first breath that is when you are completely separate from mother. Now, here's what's crazy about all that. That's baby. What about the afterbirth? What happens to that? <laughs> that's what's left behind in the hospital. Baby goes home with mom and dad, never to be heard from again, until they need to call baby in the court. But the point is, is that the afterbirth, the fetal tissue, is an exact, it's, it's my DNA exactly. So that also appears to have been abandoned in the hospital. And my mother's DNA. What's interesting about my mother's DNA is that my mother's DNA is not a combination of mom and dad, is it? It's just my mm-hmm. mom. Yeah, this is where it gets nutty. This is, I'm going to go biblical on you. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's DNA is a, a born to a virgin because no biological earthly father had anything to do with the birth of the birth of that maternal afterbirth. When it came out of my mother's womb, it, they, they call it born alive. Legally, it's called born alive, and it's a separate legal person. So that child, that legal issue, the maternal issue has no earthly father. It's it's an immaculate conception. Mm. It's pure. It's it, it's it is. I, I I'm gonna I, I don't I know this sounds funny, but it, that is that's <laughs> that's Jesus. That's the sacrificial lamb. It, it's, it's not born of an earthly father, and it is sacrificed. That's the sacrifice. That's the child sacrifice that they're still making, by the way. It's not the baby that sacrificed like a lot of Christians are screaming about. It is the actual afterbirth that is sacrificed. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and, and that's my mother's DNA. Because the, the Roman Catholic Church does not lay claim to the product of mom and dad. They only lay claim to the female. They only lay, so my mother's DNA is, is only passed on between females. In other words, the, the, the maternal afterbirth is a product of what's called the mitochondrial lineage of, of, of mother to mother to mother to mother. There is no biological father in the, the mitochondrial lineage. It's all female which is the Roman Catholic Church. In other words, it is the female 
church. So the maternal afterbirth is the only part that the Roman Catholic Church is claiming. They're not claiming baby, and they're not claiming the fetal afterbirth tissue. They're only claiming the vessel, the tissue itself, from my mother. And that's the problem is that the title left behind in the, in the hospital, Curtis Richard Kallenbach, Curtis Richard Kallenbach can go either for my mother's DNA or the fetal tissue. And, and, and by the way, the entire banking system is built upon this because it's built upon um, the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. It's, that is what the entire, what is it, the, the, the uh, certificate of indulgence is based upon. So when you have that vessel, when you have that DNA on your side, you have Jesus on your side, and it basically is an indulgence. It pays the bills. It, 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 there's no outstanding debt. Remember, Jesus died for your sins. That's right. Yep. And that and that's what this is. If you know how to reattach, reattach to that vessel. If you know how to pull that vessel back into your world, then Jesus is in your world and and acts as that sacrifice. And I know this sounds funny because I'm not a religious guy, but I'm talking science here. That maternal afterbirth is the full discharge of everything you do in your entire life. But it has to be connected to you. If it's not connected to you, it becomes all the problems in your world. If it is connected to you, then you're, you're basically, you're safe. It's, a, it's, it's, you gotta think of it as like a, a ship that it's, it's out there and it finds you in the sea of commerce and it pulls you out of the water. I mean, doesn't Jesus walk on water? That's right. Mm -hmm. Just like just like a boat stays on the surface of the water, a vessel stays a boat, it's, and that's exactly what happens. I believe that the um, that that the, the the story of Noah is the story of the Sea of Commerce coming over the top of the world, not not real water. I'm talking about the Sea of Commerce, and and the only way you can survive such a flood, i.e., the Sea of Commerce. I mean, the, the, if, if the whole world is covered in the sea of commerce, what do you need to survive? In other words, your only salvation would be if you had a boat. <laughs> you, you need a boat. Yeah, you need and, a ship, a boat. Yeah, you need a ship. And when you have the, the, the maternal afterbirth, which has its own name, has its own title, when that ship is registered back to you properly, then you have your own salvage vessel. You actually have Jesus on your side, so every time you fall in the Sea of Commerce, your own vessel, your own, your own salvage ship comes and saves you. If you don't have a ship to save you and you fall in the water, then you get salvaged by somebody else's ship, and a salvage lien is then placed against that action. So that's where uh, we could go into this at a later date, but when you have your own salvage vessel, i.e. Jesus, on your side, you never have to worry about com the, the commercial world. Because they're never going to have a salvage lien, i.e. charges. You accept the charges, Kurt? You accept the charges, Mr. Kallenbach? I don't, I, I'm never going to be brought into a courtroom again because I have my own vessel. I have my own salvage vessel. I have Jesus on my side. When I fall in the water, the, the Sea of Commerce, my boat's right there to pull me out. I'm good and to you, go. You know that this also... Uh, uh, has connections with the with the Jewish religion, where the mother is paramount when you when you're finding out who is a true uh, Jewish uh, descendant. Uh, it goes to the mother, not the father. And that's why you need to stay connected. In other words, what is the um the the flags or the sigils of the Middle East? You have the the crescent moon and the star. Mm -hmm. That is the Madonna and child. The star is the Christ, and the, and the lunar, the the moon, the moon itself is the mother. That's so you right. have the yep. so you have the, the the Madonna and child is the star and the and the crescent moon. This is why also that the moon is always connected to romance. <laughs> it's true, yeah, because the moon is a romantic. Meaning romance, with bringing in uh, women and romance, the moon, uh, 
And of course, the moon has a lot to do with the with the woman's uh, periods, and and uh, it draws water. I mean, there's a, it, all of this goes back to ancient religious uh, occultism in the Jewish Jewish world, and the Middle East, and the Roman world, especially in the Greek and then Roman world. And all of this implies that there's a bigger, bigger picture on how the earth works and how the world runs and what you know what banks are what police are uh, how all of this stuff is connected behind the scenes and that's why I am always saying on all my shows that you really don't appreciate uh how the world really works until you get someone who is explaining all the dark intricacies of the way we live and the way we live life with the words and the terms and the oh, powers yeah. that are over us, it's, it's a it's a world of knowledge that most people will never be privy to know about. There's a, there's you just said something right there. I um, mean, and early right when you were starting the show tonight, you said knowledge is power. What people don't realize is that the um the word information. If you go into the Black Law Dictionary, you'll see that information and the word knowledge are one and the same. But and information is exactly what mother signs when she's filling out those forms. She becomes the informant, so she's creating the very information that provides what intimate knowledge of your existence because that information is tied to your DNA. That's the most intimate knowledge there can be because it's the, it's, it's the essence of your existence. It's the knowledge. It's 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 knowledge of your essence. It doesn't get any more intimate than that. So no. that so the word knowledge and information are one and the same. So again, knowledge is power. But what they have is all of these deeds, all of these this paper that identifies you through your DNA. If you don't recollect it, if you don't collect it, if you don't bring it back into your world, it's out there in the public. And what I call it is the public. I call it a public easement. If you abandon your DNA to the public, you become a charge. A charge, a public charge. You do. We do. We all do. If we don't reclaim our DNA, if we don't get that back into our possession, if we don't occupy our own bodies, so to speak, then, then we become a charge to the public. And that's what, that's the problem here is that instead of running away from the name, what we have to do is understand how to reclaim our lives from the church. Think about it this way. It's almost like a, a a baby, a basket being dropped off on the steps of the church, uh, an abandoned child. That's kind of what this is like. If we don't reclaim our lives, we're always under the care of the church wardens. Always, yeah, right. for our entire life. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I guess the following question would be, uh, how is this possible to do this? Because I understand the basic concept. But, uh, you know, where would you start to learn how to do this, to get your life back, given back to you and your freedom? Well, I would, and, uh, well between you and I, I, I would, I would help you do it one on one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know, but I mean, for anybody else, I mean, if they want to go to my website and start and, and learn some of this stuff, um, they, they, they need to go there and, and, and they need to invest a little bit, just like this. I mean, I've listened to your stuff for years. And that's, that's the only way I got to where I am. I mean, I had to, I had to let go of a lot of ideas, you know, so I, I, I had basically the eyes to see. It, 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 I wasn't tainted anymore by a belief system. And that, that's what the first thing you have to do is get rid of all your belief system. It, 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 but the reality is, is it, this is all mechanics. It's all mechanics. The only one that has the right, when you go back to the very first cause, which is that zygote, the fertilized ovum, the, the, the very point where you were created. That's your paramount claim upon your existence. And by claiming that moment, you you also own all subsequent uh, uh happenings. So if you can if you go back to the very first moment and claim that DNA, then everything that you produce through that DNA, which is the capital and labor of your existence, is called industrial property. When you claim that, nobody can make any nobody can make an alternative claim. The idea that this weird trust exists, that there's this Set a KV trust from 1666. Trusts don't exist when there's a singular owner. So everybody that wants to talk trust with me, they need to just back off because I, there is no trust when there's a singular owner. So my question to you, uh, Jordan, is how many people own your life? 
How many people have a legitimate claim upon your life? Only one, and that's you. So if there's only one owner, there is no trust. If there's multi, if there's anything more than one owner, then there's a the potential trust to exist. And see, that's why all the people that are chasing all this trust property and stuff, their very first premise is off. If your first step is in the wrong direction, you know, I don't care what you find along the way, it's wrong. So, hmm. and that, that, it's very simple. Claim the first moment, claim that, that circumfunct moment where the zygote, where mom and dad's DNA first come together and your unique DNA is generated. From that moment, and by the way, it's not as difficult as it sounds, but when you do that, and then you re, you re, re, relink the vessel, the mother's, the mothership back to you, now the Madonna and child, the mother, not mother and child, all that stuff gets relinked, and, and ultimately you, you become the owner of your life, and nobody will ever bother you again. I, I guarantee you. It's so weird, but, and this is, this is mechanic. It's, it's not a belief system. It's just mechanic. So Do you have if, information on your website that uh, is written that people can uh, can can sit and read and try and figure it out for themselves? Yeah, uh, yeah. So in fact, this letter, everything that I've ever done is is available at that site. And again, I I'll take people one on one, and 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 I would you would be a special case for me anyway, just to be, just just to get your stuff done. But anybody else, um, they can go to. What is it? Uh, www.curtisrichardcollenbach.xyz and 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 start listening to this stuff. It, I mean, seriously, just start listening to it and 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 change change the ideas about religion or change your ideas about patriotism. None of it exists. It doesn't exist in nature. Why would it exist in reality? You know, it doesn't. So we need to let go of all that stuff because ultimately, remember that. The father's side of the equation is your government. It's, your mind is your government. And your body is the universe that needs to be governed by the mind. So to be, and I don't use this word very often, but to be a sovereign in your existence, you have to have the government in your own mind watching over the body, which is the universe. Remember that that, that spark in the heart, in that SA node, the sinoatrial node of the heart, wherever it comes from, if it comes from somewhere out in space, and enters that that place. That's the sun or the center of your universe, and 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 so your all the cells in your body are the constituency of your existence. But the seat of your government is in your mind, in the temple. And if you don't govern yourself, if you believe something erroneous, like there's there's a savior, or if you believe in religion, or if you believe in some external government, then that's going to be your government. So sovereignty is basically it only extends from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. That's your sovereignty. You don't you don't you're not sovereign outside of that at all. Everything is within the self. So yeah, again, these yeah. these are very simple concepts for people. You know, I, I'm not sovereign over anything you do, Jordan. <laughs> I don't have any claim to anything you do because my kingdom is from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing beyond that. So. Um, Again, that yeah. goes back to uh, goes back to concepts in in, in uh, Judaism that I've heard those basically same concepts and ideas you're expressing uh, in Judaism that um, that you are the kingdom you know from the you know, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. There you uh, go. <clears throat> and the mother is the uh, is a very important in distinguishing whether you are a, a Jew or not is from the mother. <clears throat> All of this, of course, implies that there is a far, far deeper reason in Judaism for all of these um, uh, uh, you know, similar facts. Uh, it's because uh, you know Jews are are very usually very good at law. And banking, and uh, and they go back, you know, into the Middle Ages, and to uh, ultimately back into the middle, uh, into the Middle East, <clears throat> and all of this is based on law, on commerce, on labor, on human beings, and of course, I, I have found out that <clears throat> our physical bodies are a security uh, for the corporation, and. Um, you know, anyone who works for a company, no matter how big the company is, like Ford Motor Company, for instance, if you're working in, in, in Africa for Ford Motor Company, it doesn't matter. You're still a Ford Motor Company employee. It doesn't matter where you are on the earth. Well, if you take all the people who work for Ford Motor Company or General Electric or anything else, 
if you take all the people, period, the people sweep up at night to the president of the company, you are all members of the Ford Motor Company family. And therefore, in law, you, uh, the group, the whole group is referred to as the, um, as the body social. The body social of the Ford Motor Company is everybody who works for it. It's called the body social. And therefore, if you are doing your job <clears throat> and they're using your body on the, on the stock exchange, uh, for, for commerce, then you are a security for the body social. And so when you retire, which means at the end of the evening you go home after work, you retire, they give you social security. No, <laughs> you are the security for the body social. So they're not giving you social security. You are the social security for the corporation. And so, you know, I, I, and I've, I've been aware of hundreds of little interesting tidbits like this. And then to hear you explaining the, the even deeper uh, uh, you know, facets of this incredible world that we live in, uh, well, we'll have to do it again. We'll have to come back on and do another couple of hours. And I really want to get into religion with you, especially into the Old and New Testament <clears throat> as it applies to maritime law, international uh, business law, corporate law, and how the religions of the world are very heavily involved. I mean, this is why churches are divided into denominations, like 50s and 100s and and, and Oh, 20s. my God. Yeah. Well, so, well uh, here, here, one last thing I'll say this is, is for, for people just to wet their whistle on uh, the weirdness of, of even belief systems, the Jewish calendar, because I started with some of the calendar ideas tonight, the Jewish calendar today says what? The year is what, 5776? 5776? Okay. That's the, that's the Anno Mundi calendar. That's the Jewish calendar. The, the, the Anno Domini calendar says it's the year 2017. That's like 3,760 years apart. So the Jews are in the future by 3,760 years because that's where the Old Testament carries them. The New Testament says it's the year 2017, but that's 3,760 years in the past. That's just, I mean, again, these are just arbitrary calendars. We live in the same moment. But the point is, is that they get to look back at us and call. We we can control the past, yeah, and but it's all on paper. It's all well, on me, paper. Let me let me ask you this: uh, tell the tell the audience very slowly where they can find your website and how to contact you. Uh, this is very important that people do this kind of research on their own. And if you've got all the great stuff there on the website, then tell everyone where to find your website and where and you know, how to contact you or whatever. Because I know there are going to be a lot of smart people who want to follow up on this. So yeah, tell us yeah. where to find you. There's the, the only website right now that I have up and running, it's been there for quite a while, is www.curtisrichardcollenbach.xyz. Everything's there that they could possibly want. And, of course, they can contact me directly through that website or just go and email me directly at curtiscollenbach at gmail. 